Hello, my friends. My name is Coach Quiggy, and today I'm going to teach you how to meditate. I am primarily in service of young leaders who want to make a difference in the world, who have a gift to give, a passion to pursue. And this conversation is for anybody and everybody because we all need to meditate. And I don't want to say that in like a pressure or conforming kind of way, but I fervently believe that the best thing that we can do for ourselves and for the world is to turn inward, turn inwardly, learn to love ourselves, learn to embrace our experience because we're so disconnected. We're so hung up on the things outside of ourselves and we get really stuck when we're not paying attention. And so meditation is going to teach you how to pay attention. This is especially relevant if you are looking to lead from within. You cannot lead from within if you don't know yourself if you can't be with yourself. So I want to break down really succinctly how we meditate and the attitude and the setup for meditation so that when you are meditating either on your own or being guided through meditation, you really have a solid foundation and understanding for how to approach it in a way that's going to um, work for you and work effectively. Meditation is not about um, doing it right or doing it wrong, but you absolutely can approach it with an attitude that's going to create more difficulty and self-sabotage and to kind of point you in the wrong direction. And I wanna give you the information that's gonna point you in the right direction so that you're doing it in a way that's really gonna support and nourish what meditation is really trying to support and nourish. So let me break it down for you. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is intention, okay? We wanna create the conditions that are conducive to the practice that we're trying to practice. And I'll go more into what exactly that is in a few moments. The first thing we wanna do is commit some time, okay? So this is like creating a container, creating a space, creating a structure um, temporally. We wanna say, hey, for the next three minutes, for the next five minutes, for the next 10 minutes, I'm going to meditate. Of course, if you're doing a guided meditation, there's a there's, a, there's an end date on it, so to speak. And that's going to help us really commit our attention during a contained period of time. So if you're not doing a guided meditation, you know, really get clear on yourself. You can use a timer. There are great apps such as Insight Timer that have free little bells, or you can just put an alarm on your phone, or if you don't want to use your phone, um, well, I don't know, what else do you do if you don't use your phone for an alarm? I guess you could use a watch or a stopwatch. Um, commit. A certain amount of time. Create a space. We want to create an environment where we are meditating. Um, it's not to say that we can't learn to meditate. I used to meditate on the New York City subway, but I had practiced a lot outside of the subway before I got really good at that or could even handle that. But we want to create a space that's going to be calming, soothing, quiet, and really nurture the qualities of attention that we're trying to nurture here. So you can create a little corner in your room, get some plants, make a little altar if you dig that. Um, but find a space that feels safe and comfortable for you and make that your meditation space. Of course, being in nature is a great option um, or in a park. Those are, those are also beautiful ways to create a space that's going to be conducive to your meditation. Finally, balanced posture. We talk about the middle way and balance a lot in, in mindfulness practice and philosophy. And so we want to be, um, you can meditate in any posture. You can meditate standing. You can meditate laying down. Sitting upright is a great place to, to, to practice because we can find a balance of both sitting upright with attentiveness while also being relaxed. We don't want to be too relaxed such that we're nodding off. We want our energy to be awake. We want our attention to be awake. We also don't want to be upright and stiff and straining. We're really looking for this gentle middle space. So finding a balanced posture, um, either sitting in a chair on a meditation cushion. I know I got back issues, so I like the kneeling. You can get these um, like little wooden sort of concoctions that you can kneel on, which takes a lot of pressure off your back, helps you sit upright, find something that works for you that's gonna let you be awake and also relaxed. Oops, wrong way. Okay, now we're going into attitude. So this is kind of a continuation of, of uh, intention, but I really wanna set you up for success in how you're approaching mindfulness. And there are so many, 
there's so many myths and misunderstandings about how we are approaching meditation that get in our way before we even sit down and meditate. So the first one is to drop the expectation for anything to happen. So many of us are sold the myth that meditation is supposed to make you stop thinking, is to make you clear and calm and happy, and that's just not going to happen right away. It will happen if you commit to practice with more time and um, energy dedicated to meditation. Eventually, you can start to really calm your mind and thoughts can come to a still. That's possible. And when you're first starting, to have that expectation is unreasonable. And the truth is that meditation mindfulness is not about being happy or being calm or being peaceful all the time. It's about being with what is. It's about turning towards and embracing, welcoming it all. Even if you're thinking like a fucking crazy person, which guess what? You probably are. So am I. It doesn't matter how long you've meditated. As human beings in this crazy concoction of a world, you're probably going to be in your head a lot. So it's not about like if we go into this expectation that that's going to um, disappear immediately because I sat down and meditated for five minutes, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot and you're going to stop. And that's where people get really stuck is they think that they're supposed to get this outcome and then they don't get the outcome that they're expecting. And so they give up on it. But if you can go in it with the attitude of embracing everything that's here and trusting in the process and in the practice, again, with time, and with committed practice, you absolutely can start to calm your mind, both within a meditation, but also as a, as a general sort of equilibrium, you become a little bit more grounded. But the only way to get there is to embrace the messiness. And, you know, a teacher of mine, Jack Kornfeld, says, like, you just got to get your ass on the cushion and sit sometimes. Like, you're going to feel restless. You're going to feel the anxiety. You're going to feel the pain in your knee. And it's not about like, you know, forcing or pushing through any of this. We want to be gentle with it, but we're being gentle with it by learning to embrace it without pushing it away or stuffing it down or getting reactive to the discomforts of being with our human experience. And it's only when we can really embrace those that we can also embrace, you know, and we're creating in the embrace the calm and the peace that we're really looking for. And it's from that place, a lot of the good shit that we're talking about and hoping for with meditation practice, the joy, the presence, the gratitude, it's all going to arise from that. But we got to be willing to be with all of it. I love this definition of mindfulness of meditation from John Kabat-Zinn, who started the Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction Program, really scientifically grounded approach to mindfulness practice, which originates in the East. In Buddhist philosophy, a lot of that is coming through here, but there's so much good science to just articulate how and why this shit works and why it's relevant in a modern context. And I love his definition that mindfulness meditation is purposeful, non-judgmental awareness of the present moment. So there's the purpose, there's the intention, there's the attitude of I'm going to welcome it all, I'm going to be here. The non-judgment is the welcoming it all. There's a continuity, a continuation of that energy of like, I might feel some, some achiness in my knee. Can I just be with that without gooding, good and batting it? without good versus eviling it. You know, we, we polarize things. That's how our mind simplifies a complex, often overwhelming experience of being human in this day and age. And when we're turning towards the mindfulness energy, the energy and the quality of attention we're trying to cultivate is more observational, objective. Can I just be with this without trying to change it or judge it? It's challenging, but it's incredibly freeing. When we, when we cultivate this ability to look at things without being so reactive. Finally, it's in the present moment. We're looking to be here and now. You know, we spend so much time and so much of our suffering is in the imagination of a future that we're worried about or holding on to or replaying a past that we regret or, or want to hold on to. And all of that is a concoction of really illusion that keeps us in suffering because we're resisting what's here in the present moment. And life is here in the present moment and mindfulness meditation is about turning towards and embracing that and really learning to be in that space. So this is the attitude of mindfulness. We're gonna create time 
uh, an environment and an energy, an attitude that is going to be conducive to the meditation practice itself. That's our setup. I really like approaching any meditation similarly to how you may approach a, a workout with, with a warm up, you know? So I'll take a sip of water, water here. We are inevitably turning our attention into our sensory experience. You know, I'm gonna, in this conversation, I'm gonna use meditating on the breath as um, the primary practice, and this is the one we're all most familiar with, and there's great reasons for that, because it's always here, it's an experience in the body, it's happening, it's moving, it's never not, like it's, it's a great, great anchor, but it's not the only one. But ultimately, when we're meditating, we're turning to the five senses. We're turning to felt experience of life. You can meditate on thoughts, which kind of have like an auditory or maybe even a visual component to them. But they're, they're kind of this different mind state than the actual experience of life through the five senses. And so when we're warming up, we're warming ourselves up to start to pay attention to and focus on and follow the experience of the breath moving in and out of the body, we want to ease our attention into the senses because often we're starting, we're really in our heads, we're super in our heads and thinking about this and that, all these responsibilities, yada, 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 or like we're really fixated on a pain, the resistance to that. We can ease ourselves into the attention by taking some deep breaths, which is a great signal to your nervous system. In fact, let's do one right now. A great signal to your nervous system that we're going to slow down which is ultimately a big part of meditation. And you hear me now, like I've slowed down in real time. I was zoom, boom, zooming, and now I'm feeling a little bit more in my body, having taken some deep breaths. And there's a great contrast that, that the deep breaths at the beginning of a meditation practice can offer, because when we're meditating, we're really gonna take our hands off the steering wheel. We're gonna see if we can release control. This is the releasing the judgment. We're not consciously breathing in the same way we would, we would breathe when we're doing breath work. And so these deep breaths can really just like illustrate a contrast between conscious control of the breath. And then after a few deep breaths, we're just gonna let go. There's no need to do anything, so to speak, as much as just become curious and observant of what's happening. I really love to warm up because I'm very auditory um, with sound, letting myself just open up to the sounds in my environment. And not chasing sounds, so to speak. If there is a sound that's prominent in your environment, like a river or an air conditioner, it can be helpful to start to kind of focus your attention on that. But I think it can be really a gentle warm up to just let whatever sounds are in your environment start to come to you one at a time. Just start to get curious. You're stepping into your sensory experience. The senses are experienced here in the present moment. You can't hear a sound in the future. You can't hear a sound in the past. So we're starting to arrive now into the present moment, finally, through the body. And this is really where we're, we're, we're mostly turning towards because we're so in our heads or outside of ourselves or in the future or in the past, which are all out here. You can't see me, but I'm out here. We're looking to turn towards the body. And one of the best ways we can warm up is with the body scan. So again, we're bringing our purposeful, non-judgmental present moment awareness to what's happening in the body, starting with the feet, you can use a spotlight, imagine a spotlight if you're visual, pick a favorite color, moving up through your ankles, your shins, your calves, up through all the way through the top of the body. And as best as we can, just noticing what's present. A, without trying to change it, and B, without trying to good or bad it, without judging it. Once we have scanned through the body, we can open back up to the full body again, sitting here, and then we can start to direct ourselves, direct our attention to whatever we are meditating on and we call this our anchor so this is really the the bulk of the practice so we've got the setup the warm-up and all of this is leading creating the conditions conditions for you to train your attention to stay where you want it to stay and to return when you lose that attention so in this case the primary practice is focusing on the breath we can also practice on mantras you can focus on the sensations in your feet 
this is an experiment that is not a one size fits all. You get to experiment and play with what works for you. Again, there are great reasons why the breath is a classic one, but for some people, it's tough to focus on the breath and they prefer to focus on a mantra. Transcendental meditation is an, is an example of that. Um, or there are a lot of other practices and you can look at some of my guided meditations to see some of those. But the primary practice, we're looking to anchor our attention. So you think about what an anchor does. It keeps the boat still keeps your attention still. And remember, we're bringing this balanced attention. We're not trying to laser focus. We're not trying to like grip and hold on to the breath. There's a gentleness to it, but there is an effort as well. We're really finding this, this spacious attentiveness. And you can imagine when you're really grinding and, and really focusing on something, there's a tension to that. And we're not aiming for that so much as like a light awareness that is present and is focused, but is not so tight. There's a looseness to it. So we're gently focusing on the breath. We're focusing on the sensations themselves, breathing in. And you can feel this. Maybe take a moment to just close your eyes and put your hand on your stomach. If you want to take a deep breath just to kind of reset. But then letting your breath breathe on its own, you can feel the stomach, the diaphragm, expanding and relaxing with each breath. You can also feel it in the rise and fall ever so gently of your shoulders. You can feel the breath right above the, the upper lip here in your nasal passages. You feel the cool air coming in slightly warmer air leaving we're really going to feel the sensations in the body and you can pick a place that is most obvious to you one of these three locations or you can just get a general sense but as you tap in and again i'm not trying to guide you in a meditation right now so i encourage you to go apply this knowledge experientially with the guided meditation after this as you're feeling the breath generally we're just arriving into the sensations, the present moment sensations without judging them. Sometimes it can be difficult to do this because we're so cognitive. And so there's a great strategy called noting where we're just adding, and this is a gentle, this is like 5% of our attention. 95% of our attention we wanna maintain in the sensations themselves, but we can add a gentle note. And this is kind of like a little mantra. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out, or even in, out, in, out, or calm, ease, calm, ease, which brings some, at, some energy and some, some quality of intention into the way. It brings in that gentleness that we're, we're looking to cultivate. It's not just the attention itself, it's also the quality of attention that we're cultivating. So we can add these little notes, and these are kind of like, you know, they're like supports. They're like training wheels. And eventually, you know, as they help us stay connected with the breath, we can release them and just focus on the breath themselves. But inevitably, we're going to lose track of the breath. And it doesn't matter if you've been meditating for 10 years like me or you are just starting right now. You're going to lose track of the breath. And so many people get stuck in the misconception that this means that they're failing. Again, the expectation, I'm going to be calm, I'm going to be good at this, it's going to shoot you in the foot from the get-go. And we want to just try to expand our expectation and intention around that. And so it's in beginning again that the, the fruits of the practice really strengthen. So in that moment where you notice that you've lost track of the breath or whatever you're anchoring your attention on, you can either beat yourself up for having, not, for having lost track or you simply and gently, non-judgmentally, purposefully, with presence, acknowledge, oh, I've lost track of the breath. And then we just begin again. We come back. We hop right back on that wave of the breath. And it's in this beginning again that we're that we can again we can either notice and use that as evidence to um, perpetuate 
self-criticism, or we can use that as, and this is what I really want to inspire you, is this is the opportunity where it's really working. You know, it's in that moment where you notice that your attention has drifted off, that you're regaining consciousness, so to speak. You're regaining and you're, you're strengthening this muscle, this personal power of attention to choose where you place your attention. And that is the moment that, that really empowers this practice more than anything and why we need it so desperately in the society where so many people, so many things are competing for our fucking attention all the time. And we're constantly drained, being pulled on. We have to choose, where do I want to be? Where do I want my attention to be? I want my attention to be with the walk that I'm going on, with the music that I'm listening to, with the project that I'm working on, with the loved one that's in front of me. I want to be present with what's in front of me. And this is teaching you to be able to choose that even when our conditioning, our brains, and the external world pulls us into other spaces. So that's a moment where you lose track of the breath or your anchor to celebrate. So we're training our attention to stay and return when lost. This is the gist of it. You rinse and repeat over and over and over again. You're just training this muscle. And guess what? When you leave the meditation, we want to take time to reintegrate, to slowly bring what we've just cultivated into real life. Because the thing is, if we rush too quickly into life, we're going to lose it immediately. Inevitably, we're going to kind of lose the, you know, what we have. You know, you're going to feel calm. You're going to feel a little bit calm, a little bit more present after a meditation or certainly after you've, you know, practice for a little bit and started to kind of get the hang of it. And we can't hold on to that. That's going to get lost in the chaos of daily life and all the responsibilities of daily life. But what we can do is really um, take time to help it stay longer. And so this is kind of like the cool down. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of open our attention gently you know, you're focusing on the breath, you start to open up to like the body sitting here and you can open back up to sounds. And then eventually you can open your eyes. I encourage you to take a moment to look around and just kind of experience the freshness of life around you. And then we're gonna move slowly. Take your time, don't rush right into the next thing. That's the brain pulling you, thinking, oh, I gotta do all this shit. No, we're not feeding that. We're not going to feed that. We're going to feed this mindful awareness and approach to life. You can set an intention. I'd like to move in the next few moments of my life as much as I can today with awareness of the sounds around me or with presence or trying not to judge. You know, something that's going to gear you in the direction that you want to go. And then we want to take our time moving forward so as not to snap back into mindlessness. And just as we are learning in the meditation itself to be forgiving when our attention um, drifts off, we want to embody that in life too. Life is a meditation. You really can treat it as such. And it's a beautiful way to approach life because it's just going to train you to really be present with what is. And we can talk about that more later. But... Recognize that you are going to get lost in the sauce. You're going to get caught underneath the wave and start to, and like in a moment, wait, like, oh my God, how could I have just missed? I feel like I've been going on autopilot the whole fucking day. And that's okay. That moment that you wake up, that's it working. That's what we're aiming for. And with a gentle but steady effort and devotion and, and consistent practice, with meditation, you're going to wake up faster. You're going to spend less time beneath the waves. You're going to feel more moments of aliveness and presence and intention and joy and openness and embrace. All of these things get to come from your practice. But as I've described, we really got to set ourselves up for success. We have to set ourselves up for the conditions, the intention, the attitude for this really beautifully wide and deep set of qualities that we're cultivating. Like you can really, you can simplify it, but it's not really doing justice to what you're cultivating. You're cultivating 
the power of attention, the, the muscle for, for choice and personal power, you're cultivating presence, you're cultivating curiosity, you're cultivating forgiveness, the list goes on. And all of this plays out, all this pays off just in your relationship to yourself and your relationship to your loved ones, but in anything and everything that you do in the world, this pays out dividends. I hope this was helpful. There's so much more to say, but I'm going to leave it at that. I hope that this is a great introduction to um, your mindfulness journey. And, and it really is a journey. It's not something to be one and done. It's something that requires consistency. So I invite you to set aside a little bit of time, a little bit of space with the right intentions every day, if possible. It's really great. This is something I didn't cover, but um, yeah, picking a time that works for you. The morning is great because it sets the tone for the day before you start to get into all the things. And the evening is great as a way to reconnect with yourself and kind of unwind from all the things, set yourself up for a good night's sleep. Little moments to pause and breathe during the day are beautiful too. But when you're starting, pick something that's going to work for you. Meet yourself where you're at and aim for sustainability for consistency. And this is really what this video is about, is to help you find a rhythm with it. Because the thing is, I tell you, the thing is, when you start to feel how fucking good this makes you feel and how much it contributes positively to your life, then you've established the positive feedback loop. And the little things that try to get in your way, stop getting in your way. And you're just like, I'm gonna show up for this day in and day out because it's so meaningful. And it's so good for me. And I see how I feel when I don't do it. That's what we're aiming for. And I hope that this is going to help you get some force to overcome some of the barriers that I know that we get stuck with when it comes to meditation practice. One day at a time, one sit at a time, one breath at a time, and trust in the process. I'm here if you need support. You can... Um, Add some comments here, ask some questions in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any particular challenges that you have um, in, in meditating that you would like addressed or support on, and I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of guided meditations. You can check out talks on mindfulness if you'd like to learn more. All sorts of good self-leadership content on perfectionism, self-doubt, insecurity. How do we get out of our own way and become the awesome fucking leader self-led leader that we get to be in this life. Lots of love, have a beautiful now, and happy practice.